Hey, this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, we're going to look at a couple other ways to set up a ground plane coordinate system. So these are kind of some further out sort of methods that you can play around with using the user interface. So with this particular shot, it's a helicopter landing sequence. So I'm just doing an auto track and we'll do a little cleanup trackers. And let's go and turn on some lens distortion calculation. So we have a basic solve here. And now we're ready to start thinking about a coordinate system. Now any coordinate system needs to have both a position, a rotation, and an overall scaling. So what we're going to do is set up a scaling using a distance constraint. And we're just assuming that we know the width of the runway. So I selected one tracker. Now I'm alt clicking the other tracker on the other side of the runway. And I'm just going to run this up to 10, 10 units, call it uh, 10 meters across. And now let's go and just update our SOF. So now we've just rescaled the entire scene to match that you know, nominal book value for the width of the runway. So now let's go to the perspective view. And we're going to be working in here to set up the coordinate system as a whole. Now, since there's no coordinate system set up yet, you can just see, you know, the whole scene's kind of up in the air and kind of at a crazy angle and so on. You know, you see here that the ground plane is, is kind of tilted off to the side in a not particularly useful fashion. So what we're going to do is go and select a bunch of trackers that are sitting here on the runway. And what we're going to snap the grid onto those trackers. So there are, there's this grid menu, and un unfortunately, by the time you run through all of this, some of the stuff winds up getting cut off the bottom. But this first item we can see, and we'll be using this throughout this tutorial, it says to facet vertices or trackers. And basically, it's going to go and snap the grid so it's no longer a ground plane grid, but it snaps to whatever you've got selected. So here I've got a bunch of trackers selected, and it goes and it brings that grid up off the ground and computes an average position for it and orientation for it based on these trackers. Now here I had a whole bunch of ones uh, selected, so you know it just created it as a, a plane. If I have only two trackers selected, then it would line up this main axis with those two. If only one is selected, then it'll snap the position to that. But that is a little off track for what we're doing at the moment. So, so far you can see we've set up this custom grid, but we haven't done anything to the scene itself. To change the scene, I need to go back to that grid menu and at the very bottom of the grid menu, there is an option that is Make Grid the Ground. And it's going to do literally that. It's going to take the custom grid that we just positioned inside the perspective window and make it the ground plane by moving everything else in the scene. So right now I'm going to do that. You can watch the top left and front views. And presto, all of the trackers moved, the camera moved, and the whole camera path moved. You don't really see anything happen in the perspective view because what was the custom grid that was up in the air is now a, a grid that's back on the ground, but nothing's actually changed from its uh, point of view, but the entire scene has been moved. So if I can set up a custom grid inside of Synthize in the perspective window, then it's easy to, to adjust the entire scene. Now, like I said, I could go and take a couple of these trackers. Now I'm going to do that to facet vertices and trackers again. Now you see it just lined up the grid with those. And if I select one of them, 
and do that same thing, it will set up that one as the origin. And each time, you know, it, it hasn't changed, you know, it didn't change the orientation. If there's one thing setting, it does the position. If there are two set, then it does the orientation. If there are three, it, it adjusts the overall alignment. Now, I could go and change this entire scene to match this modified custom grid that I just set up. But instead, I'm going to go and do something different. So I'm just going to set that ground back to be the floor grid in the perspective window. And I'm going to go into this top view and just create a box. And now I will just spin that box around a little bit and get it lined up. With our runway, maybe we can make it a little bigger. So I've got this thing sitting out there in the middle of the runway. And sometimes you might position some object into your scene and you haven't really set up a coordinate system yet. Then suddenly you realize, you know, hey, that's a pretty good thing to use as a coordinate system. So you can take advantage of that with a script. And the script is make mesh the ground. And when I select that, you'll see again the perspective views all change around, or the 3D viewports all change around as all the trackers and the camera path and so on are readjusted so that that mesh is now the ground plane. And in particular, what it is, is it's the local coordinate handles of that object that become the ground plane. So here, you know, the box and synthize is set up to be sitting on top of things. So that local coordinate system is down at the bottom, just uh, as it is with the sphere, say. I'm just going to go and create a sphere instead. And it, and you can see that it's set up so that instead of having the coordinate system in the middle of the sphere, as you might for a, just a plain modeling application, here it's set up to be like a ball rolling down the road. So the local coordinate system is at the bottom of the object. So if I was going to go and do that same thing, you see that it's that initial local coordinate origin of the mesh that's used to be the overall coordinate system. So depending on, on what you've got, if you've imported an object that you made in some other package, however you built that object, that'll, that'll determine where the coordinate system actually goes if you use that, make the coordinate system, make the mesh the ground operation on your particular object that you've imported. But of course, you can always go and move things around further to adjust them subsequently. So I just wanted to go back now as an extra bonus. And let's look at some of the other things you can do with that grid operation. So I'm going to go and take our sphere and say I want it to be the edit mesh. So that exposes all the vertices. Now we'll go and say we want to lasso some vertices. Got an extra there. So let's get just those three. And now if I go back and select on that grid menu the two facet vertices and trackers operation, now you see that the custom grid has been snapped onto that plane set up by those vertices. So it's it's really the facet of the mesh. So you know, if you import an object, you can even go and dig down into it and set up a custom grid there. Now I could use that custom grid now to go and reorient the scene if I wanted. More likely, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to maybe do some editing on the thing using this custom grid. But I just wanted to show the sort of thing that you could do with that particular 
too fast at vertices and trackers operation. So I hope this gives you some more food for thought as to different ways that you can set up coordinate systems inside of Synthize. Take care.